Hey, what's up, Refers? I have been kicking around the idea of doing a coral index list for a while. For you plant folks, it's kind of like Katie Allen's Rare Plants Index. I thought this would be a fun way to share coral trends of what's popular right now. So while I was in Florida visiting Top Shelf Aquatics, I ran this idea by them and asked them for the top seven most sought after corals at the moment. Knowing that chasing the latest and the hottest is likely going to leave a little bit of a uh, stick of shark and probably a little bit of sour taste, I also asked them for their top six, uh, supposed to be seven, but we did six, top six classic corals that kind of retain their popularity over time and most likely with a more modest sticker price. With that said, this is the pilot run of the Coral Index series. If you have some ideas of how I can make this better, please leave it in the comment below. I really appreciate it. And special shout out to Dave of TSA because honestly, I just hold the camera and he did all the work. So thank you, Dave. And for you guys, enjoy the show. First up on the list is actually not a coral but I think it's, uh, it's fair to include them as well. So Dave, take us off. All right, over here we have our Colorado Sunburst Anemones. And these are some of the most sought out bubble tip anemones on the market hands down. The variants and the color changes and the varieties are from yellow and gold and red. And it's just absolutely stunning green base disc. These guys are propagated in this particular system and we keep them far, far away from our Chicago's. And of course, even though it is up for debate whether Chicago's and Colorado's can be mixed together, we are not gonna take that chance right at the moment when we're propagating this many at this facility. Can we take a look at the uh, Colorado one as well? Yeah, oh, these are Colorado. These are Colorado one, okay. Yep. The Chicago. Chicago. Chicago's this way. All the way on the other side of the facility. You guys really keep them far apart. Oh, we keep parts. them so far apart. So over here, the Chicago's. Now you're gonna find a lot of yellows and of course oranges within these guys. The Chicago's are a little easier to propagate than the Colorado's. And the Chicago's of course have, just like, just like the Colorado, some nice amount of morphs and colors. And sometimes when you get them to an enormous size, you'll see an immense amount of just straight yellow come out of some of the morphs, which is absolutely stunning. It looks like the, um the Colorado is more like the OG, right? Chicago is more like a new Colorado is OG. Chicago is slightly newer than the, uh, the and just recent to the market. Colorado has been around for quite some time, but is I mean, you look at it and it's stunning. That's the reason why it's beautiful. Is there any like uh, major visual distinction between the two or like color stage? The Colorados are going to be just a bit brighter than the Chicago's, and you're going to have more of the of course fluorescence within the tentacles. Um, compared to the Chicago's overall. You'll notice a lot of Chicago's will more lean towards the orange and the yellow, where the Colorado's will have that, of course, deep fire red orange and a fire, fire red and yellow burnt throughout the entire tentacle compared to the Chicago's. So since we're talking about like the hot trending stuff, usually these things don't come cheap, but there is a market for them that's why they're priced that way. Uh, so hit us with it. How much do they actually cost? All right, so for the Chicago's are about seven to $800 versus the Colorado's over the other side are about 1000 to $1,200 each. Got so it. of course there is a demand. The Colorado's have a slightly more demand than the Chicago's, but they do have a, a nice price tag. And of course it's worth every penny because they're gorgeous. Number six on the list, what do we got? So here we have a lot of the more the high-end collector tenures and various other collector corals, mostly all Agropora in this tank right here. And some of our newest ones, of course, and this is by far one of my favorites, the Ronky Balboa. And you're gonna see bright red polyps, but look at that base. It's gonna have these bright yellow bottom base polyps on it with a dark, of course, blue tips and skin throughout. And just to give you an idea on a frag, this guy is encrusting insane with the same amount that That's one is beautiful absolutely stunning that is absolutely beautiful and how about like are they difficult to care for or are they no not very difficult to care for of course just as same as any other acro of course keep everything stable uh, keep your alkaline calcium magnesium those are the three primary and at the same time with of course any kind of agroporate even the high ends to keep those dark deep rich colors make sure you're going to have quite a bit of nutrients as far as nitrogen. Nitrates is what you're gonna keep up there. If you bottom out, of course, you're gonna lose those colors a little bit and might fade ever so slightly. Right over here, this guy is our Taj Mahal. It's more of a deep water. Of course, what people would say is a smooth skin a lot of times because you're not gonna see a large variety of polyp extension. Now these little polyps will pop out, but that texture in the skin 
very, very smooth throughout. The core lights are separated and the color contrast is absolutely amazing. Uh, deep water. Are they harder to keep than uh, standard Echos? Not necessarily harder to keep, but these guys, are they're not as fast growers than some of the other corals that you'll find out there. But at the same time, it's well worth the wait. Just keep, keep the parameters just like any other Acropora and it'll be just fine. So for this one, we have the Oompa Loompas. And this particular Zoa with the bright orange rim, green base, it's extremely popular at the very moment. Even though it's becoming somewhat of a classic, of course, it's still in demand. You don't, they don't grow as fast as we could actually propagate them. So they are few and far in between. So if you see one, it is time to grab one. It's a beautiful one. Right here is the Microgani or Bernardopora. These guys are gonna have smaller tentacles. They look like just like any other Ganipora, but of course the tips and the tentacles are a fraction of the size. Now they can put out super tentacles. Now those guys can definitely sting any neighbors, and sometimes they may or may not play nice with their larger cousins, the Ganipora. So just use a little bit of caution with those guys, just in case, because you don't want one stinging the other. This one is just by far one of the farm favorites. It has a bright pink purple base tentacle, and of course the tips are just littered with this bright orange to it. It's like a fiery red. Are these the same one? I see, I noticed the ones up front is a little bit more orange, the ones in the back is a little bit more red. Yes, of course they're gonna be slightly different. Of course the back is gonna see what's called the pop rocks. And they, so the variations are a little slight. They're not gonna have any of the purple or pink base in the tentacles. The Laffy Taffy is the one that's gonna be just colored throughout. And of course the next one on the list is no surprise because it is the... Holy Grail, the Holy Grail torch. This is the torch that everybody and their cousin wants. That bright yellow and green with the blue tips. This is the color that everybody has sought over. And of course with the torches, it is still the reigning champion for the color and the form. Even though we do have ones that are up and coming. Such as right here, Heaven's Gate. This one is gonna have the bright teal tips. And you have bright teal tips, you're gonna have gold and orange all throughout. And just like any other torch with the Holy Grails, Heaven's Gate, give it nice bright light, guys, because it's gonna have nice, beautiful color compared to any other, of course, euphilia out there. And I guess like the trick is to give it like highlights. Yes. The trick is give it a highlight. The highlight, you're gonna get more yellows, golds, oranges. And when you put it down lower, you're gonna get more of the greens and darker colors. So if you want those bright, bright yellows, bright, of course, put them higher to the light. Whereas they're almost like a uh, <laughs> Acropora, stay in the same level and they'll still take light just fine. Uh, in terms of water flow, like how much flow do they Oh, need? yeah, torches. Torches love flow. And compared to if their cousins are, when you have the hammers and the, the frog spawns, you're gonna have lower light and lower flow. Torches, exact opposite. They're gonna enjoy a lot more flow throughout it. And that flow, of course, if you give it more and more flow, it's gonna grow closer together. The branches will spread out further apart and slightly lower flow. But of course, you want those tentacles sweeping. It's gonna of course, clean up the coral overall. So for example, like looking right here, right? Would you say this is like just the right amount or we could use a little bit more? Is this like a little bit more? Of course, what would this call? And these on the outside, of course, are getting a really nice amount of flow. You're gonna see the tentacles being pulled away from the base. But of course, not it's retracting. These guys in the center, of course, they're, they're pulled away from the flow. So I would say the ones all the way in the left are getting the most optimal flow optimal overall flow. compared Got to the rest. All right, perfect, thank you. All right, another one of the trending corals. Dave, what we got? All right, so now we have what's called our fruity splice. Now, of course, a lot of people have heard our fruity pebbles. Now, this is our fruity pebbles who like to take a turn. You can see these bright green pigments shooting out through the base from the colony all the way up into the branches now. So now it's been spliced into two where, of course, that pigment is now throughout the entire colony, something we never had in a past fruity pebbles. It is an absolutely, of course, color contrast, beautiful. Did this like when you got this core, did this happen or did it happen in your system? No, it happened in our system. We, it, when it first arrived, we've been growing the fruity pebbles for numerous years yeah. and it never once had that pigment to shoot up from the base. You'll get encrustment with that same kind of color as it grows out and gets bigger. But then one day, of course, the encrustment color and pigment decided to, of course, appear throughout many different parts of this entire piece right here where you see the green tips just popping out everywhere. Now, if people get a frag of the pink section, mm -hmm. would they get a, would green uh, coral lights start popping out as well, or? Uh, it is possible, but when we do sell frags, we want them to get a little combination of both. That Got way, it. of course, it ensures you're getting both a little bit of that. We will sell frags of just, the, of course, the pink and the orangey ones by itself. Uh, of course, but of course, if you want the fruity spice overall and both two tones, we have them both.
One of the uh, crowd favorites, OG Corals. What you got? One of the crowd favorites, there are even there are quite a few to choose from. This is one of my personal favorites. This is the Oregon Tort. This is one Acropora that you can find in white light or in blue light and it's always gonna shine. It has fluorescence underneath, so under blue light it's gonna come out absolutely stunning. It's one of the most bluest corals you're gonna find throughout and if you are an OG reefer, you are gonna have first heard of the name Organ Tort, which has been around for many, many years. It's solid, it's true, it's not the fastest grower, but once it grows out, it's something to be amazed. Since we're at the SPS uh, tank right here, we're gonna talk about some another really nice classic of SPS. So Dave, what we got? This is an ORA piece. This is one of my personal favorites as well. This guy, of course, is the ORA Pearlberry. And if you just look at the color contrast between the purple bluish tips to that pearlorescent base, even the green under blue and white light, this is an absolute stunning, stunning coral. And this one has been in the hobby for a while? Oh, years. Uh, Pearlberry has been in here for, for over decades. Of, it's been quite known for old school reefers, new school reefers, and it is still by far one of the biggest ones in demand. This one is quite, and has become recognizable throughout the entire hobby. Walt Disney, originally from Mike Vigar, and he was the original person to grow out that particular piece and it, when it first spread around. And that is one coral that is well known to change in color, depending on your light, your spectrum, your water quality, yeah, or you can even get as close to having brightish orange and pinks and purples throughout the entire colony, yellows, and then it can tone down to more of yellow, greens, and purples, depending on how the intensity of the light is. It's an absolute must for old schoolers, and of course for new hobbyists. One of the classic Zoas, of course it's the... Utter Chaos. Oh, Utter Chaos course. has been around for some time. Now the Utter Chaos is one of those tricky Zoas that one thing that people don't realize, see how fat and plump these guys are? You put them in a little bit of lower light and the bigger they will expand to absorb more light, you'll see more pattern and it'll be just as bright. You put those guys in very, very high light, they'll become extremely small, pushed in, and you won't see that beautiful splatter pattern throughout them. So keep them in the first lower light and you'll keep them nice, fat, and plump. That's a nice tip actually. I got some other chaos and I love how large the ones you got. <laughs> this pileup is almost the size of a quarter. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Mine is like size of a dime or nickels and I guess uh, the lower light and it, does the flow matters? Uh, flow is not as, as not as much but the light will of course definitely impact that size of those polyps. For, for the for the zoas you have here, do you guys feed or just? We do broadcast feed all the tanks. Uh, they maintain the nitrates and phosphates in all the entire system. So for these guys, they do get a healthy dose of Fido. There's four uh, oyster feast and a nice, nice blend of Benepets as well that gets spread throughout the entire tank. Just of course for all the corals, whether it's Zoas, Acros, LPS, you name it. There's another piece that's sought after. So David, what is mm -hmm. it? This is, this is honestly one of the best and most pink corals you can find. It's a Princess Peach. It is very recognizable now in the industry. And of course it's one we've grown since the, the company has started. And it has these bright, beautiful pink coralites. And of course a little lime green throughout the base. And it, if you want a tabling coral, this is one to get. It'll grow upwards a little bit, about two inches, and all of a sudden you'll see our tabling outwards. And you can see the branches starting fanning around. High flow, high light, and give it plenty of light, because that's one that's gonna, of course, get this bright pink, the more light you give it. That's funny. That's funny. It was uh, after work. Something happened, and people scrambled. <laughs> Wait, what's going on here? I put food in the tank. <laughs> <laughs> the, feed, the corals need to feed. Yeah, what, what are you guys feeding? Uh, something in a bag. Nice. <laughs> That's fair. It's prepared by the farm staff. Okay, I'm all right. Sure it's, uh, I don't know, I work in this store, I don't really know. <laughs> <laughs> Oyster oh, piece, Fido, Benepets. It's got a combination of a uh, secret blend of everything as far as the corals right. would consume. You name it, they eat it. Dave got to sell just so bad. All right, we're trying to take a nice picture. We're just a nurse to apparently sit in his chair all day and lay back. We're trying to we're trying to find a place. Wait, you're not bringing the chair? No. Well, I would say here. Right here is a really good spot. In a yeah, trash can? Chair. What? There's your, there's your all right, Dave. One more classics of TSA. What do you think? One more classic, and this is my uh, is one near and dear to my heart because it came from me originally. This was back in 2008 when Mary Cultures first came into existence in the hobby. And everyone said Mary Cultures died, they'll never survive. 
and this one is the Rainbow Sherbert. I first acquired it in 2008. Hey, hey Grandpa. What? Well, huh? Grandpa, can we, we, we go, go home? We go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dave, I guess that's not you, man. My last coral, come on. Here it is, here are the coral frags that we pulled out. We got a decent amount of goldenrod and most of them already spoken for. 